Three things that can really compromise your Indian wedding in Italy. Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. I am Svetlana from Best Indian Weddings Italy, the first and only wedding planning agency in Italy specialized in Indian weddings. Every day I help Indian brides and grooms to be realize their authentic celebrations in the most beautiful country in the world. I'm running this series of videos called SOS Indian Weddings in Italy with useful tips and advices that you won't find anywhere else. So, if you are looking to host your Indian celebrations in Italy, then please subscribe to my channel, hit the bell to always keep updated with a new video every week. This week I'm talking about three things that can really compromise your Indian wedding in Italy. Every time that an Indian couple starts planning their destination wedding in Italy, they focus on the beauty of the places, on the views of a venue, on the landscapes surrounding them, and they are speechless in front of such beautiful and amazing places. They start daydreaming, picturing their ceremony maybe on a cliff with a breathtaking sea view, or on a wide sanded beach, or in the middle of uh, Tuscan vineyards and countryside. And by mainly focusing on this aspect, everything else takes second place. Sometimes they check if the price of a specific venue is okay for their budget. However, many other important aspects that are not checked in the first instance start popping out later on when the couple is already in the middle of the planning and that could definitely jeopardize all the hard work done so far and compromise the budget. So today I want to address three essential aspects to check before you select a venue because these aspects can really make or break the success of your wedding. So let's see together what are these three aspects. First of all, something that may be taken for granted, but it's not obvious at all, is the infamous backup plan. That means having in their house in case of bad weather, which need to be enough for all your events and able to host your number of guests. Of course, you likely choose Italy to have a stunning outdoor wedding and enjoy the views, but weather is unpredictable, you can never know. It could even rain in August when you least expect it. You can be extremely lucky and have a perfectly sunny day, or maybe it could rain heavily for just 10 minutes and then be sunny again. Or it could be just drizzle, but you can never know in advance. As I always say, you need to be prepared for every situation. You always need to start with the worst case scenario. So what do you need to check to make sure you have a valid backup plan? For example, if the venue has a panoramic terrace, if it has a cover, or and it can be clustered on the sides if there are indoor halls, if they are panoramic, or if they at least have large windows, if there are other smaller halls for your pre-wedding events. So, assume that it's going to rain for the whole duration of your events. Hopefully not. I suggest making a list of the events and their food functions and writing down if the food function has to take place in the same area of the event, as it could be the case for Mindy, Sangeeta, Jago or welcome party, or if it requires a different area that could be for the wedding lunch that can't be held in the same area as the ceremony. After that, check how many indoor spaces you need and of which capacity. For sure, you will need at least two different spaces. Then you need to verify if the venue you are choosing has the spaces and the right capacity, because if your reception is for 100 guests, you would need a reception hall for at least 140 to 150 people, because you need the space for tables and for the dancing too. Then the ceremony room has to have high ceilings, so that the mandap can be set up inside, 
and spaces big enough for the entrance of the groom after his barat and also for your guests to sit comfortably. Small precautions you need to consider because even if the venue tells you they have indoor spaces, what happens if you find out later that they're not big enough? You would need to rent a marquee or cover the sides of the gazebo they already have and you can't figure that out last minute because it could be too expensive for your budget and you would need to give up something else to cover this expense. And if we consider exclusive villas by the lakes or see new venues on the Amalfi cost, the cost of a marquee could reach 20 or even 50,000 euros depending on your number of guests. So make sure you check all of that before choosing a venue. The second important aspect regards the logistic of transfers. Italy is not a huge country, though it's vast and varied, and not all parts of Italy are easily accessible. Many couples think about Rome, Florence, Milan, and other famous cities that they visited as tourists, and of course, everything is much easier in a big city. But when it comes to getting married in a small town, maybe in the countryside of Tuscany or on the Amalfi Coast when you have those postcards landscapes, then the logistic aspect becomes extremely important. Because Italy has tons of beautiful places, but some are located in the middle of nowhere, reachable only by car after driving around winding roads for two or three hours from the closest international airport. And maybe you have chosen a charming venue, but then realize that there is not enough rooms to accommodate all of your guests. So some of the guests would need to lodge somewhere nearby. Maybe by looking at the map, you could even find uh, some small hotels or guest houses at 5 to 10 kilometers. But not being familiar with the place, you can't realize that even such a short distance would require a 30-minute drive because of the narrow roads. And you should even consider that sometimes in the small towns it could be hard to call a taxi or an Uber because it's nothing similar to the big cities where you come from. So yes, there are stunning locations, however, you need to verify all these logistics in advance. Is it easy for all your guests to find accommodation close to the venue? If there's not, how easy would it be for your guests to reach the wedding venue from the hotel they are staying in? If there's a chance to easily call a taxi? If your guests have to travel back and forth more than once every day and maybe pay 50 or more euros for each travel, you understand, it's not reasonable. When we work with our couples and we do our venue scouting service, one of the first things we do is checking the logistics because that's the only way to avoid delays and make sure that the guests are pleased and the couple can relax. If you are interested in having professional help to choose your venue and not compromise your wedding in Italy, you can inquire about venue scouting service that we provide. I've put the link in the description. The third important aspect is the mismanagement of the timing. Of course, an Indian couple getting married abroad can't be familiar with the timing of a destination wedding. And even if you have been invited to other weddings or you have helped family to plan their weddings, the timing of the wedding back home is completely different. There are so many aspects to take into consideration. For example, if you're having the ceremony and reception on the same day, if all your guests are staying in the same place or not, which events will be performed, the time that the priest is available, the hours of service by the venue, and so on. 
Many aspects that often get overlooked by the couples who are not familiar with the planning of a wedding. Even a 30 minutes delay can make all the timing fall apart. Especially if there are transfers booked or the suppliers hired by the hours or if you have a strict timetable, this would lead to you being extremely stressed and your guest being unhappy. Of course, if you have a wedding planner, they will manage all the timing, though they need to know how to manage an Indian wedding. But if you are planning your wedding on your own, my advice is to at least hire a day coordinator for the wedding day so that you will have someone on site helping you out with the management of the timing and the suppliers on site while you can enjoy your wedding. However, if this is not something that you are able to do, we have a specific digital program for do-it-yourself couples how to plan your Indian wedding in Italy on your own, where you have access to a template of the timing with everything you need to take into account and also a topic dedicated to the planning for the perfect outcome of your Indian wedding in Italy. You'll find the link in the description. Otherwise, make sure you write down the detailed schedule to verify with all your suppliers to understand if it works. As you can see, these things could seem obvious, but if not taken into consideration, they can truly compromise the success of your entire event. Don't take things for granted. Don't be blinded by the beauty of a place but always have a more practical view of the planning because this way you'll have the full picture of all these aspects, backup plan, logistics and timing that are truly essential for the outcome of your Indian wedding in Italy. That's all for today. Thank you for watching this video that I hope can truly help you with planning your amazing Indian wedding in Italy. If you haven't done it yet, Subscribe to my channel, follow Best Indian Weddings Italy on Facebook and Instagram, comment in the post and I will be happy to answer. See you next week!